today is the last day uh, in this and all <coughs> and today i'll be telling you about the last uh, center of sahastra If I come late, it is better, I think. Still, I was quite late, I was thinking. Do you think this is needed on the eyes so much or are you not getting my picture? Yes. This one, if you could a little bit push it the other way. This one, it's too much. Yes, thank you. this last center this astara is contained in the limbic area of the brain our head is like a coconut the coconut has the hair and then a hard nut and then a black covering and inside is white shell of coconut and inside is the space the what in the same way our brain is made that's why coconut is called as shri phala is the fruit of the power that is shri shri power is the right side power and the left side power is the lalita power so we have two chakras left side here is the lalita and right side here is the shri chakra these two chakras are working out the right side maha saraswati's power and left side maha kali's now the central power is the kundalini that has to rise and penetrate through different chakras enter into the limbic area and enlighten the seven pithas seats of the seven chakras so it penetrates through six chakras enters into the limbic area and lightens all the seven pithas in the brain which are placed along the midline of the limbic area so we started from the back is placed here at the back is the muladhara chakra around it is the swadhisthana then is the navi 
then the heart, then the Vishuddhi, and then the Agya. So all these six centers are co combining to make the seventh center. This is a very important point which we should come Now the Shri Chakra is the right side working and the Lalita Chakra is the left side working. So when the Kundalini doesn't rise, then we do with our right side our physical and mental activities. So our brain is doing right side activity and that's why our brain is like Shri Phala. Sahasrara is actually is the assemblage of these six chakras and is a hollow space. On the sides of it there are one thousand nadis and when the light penetrates into the limbic area then the enlightenment of these nadis take place and you can see them as flames, very gentle flames burning and these flames have all the seven colors that you see in the Vibhjyar. But the last one ultimately becomes again integrated and it is a crystal clear flame. All these seven lights ultimately become crystal clear. So you have Sahasrara with one thousand petals as they call it, but if you cut the braid in a transfer section or a horizontal section, you will be able to see that all these nerves are built like this along the limbic area, all of them are like a petal. And if you cut it like this, you will find that there are many nerves in every bundle of nerves. So when it is enlightened, you can see Sahasrara as a burning bundle of flames. When I am speaking you should not do all these things, please. They are still coming and just disturbing. It's a very deep subject. So the, when the enlightenment of the Kundalini takes place in the brain, then the truth is perceived through your brain. That's why it's called as Satya Khand, means you start seeing the truth perceived by your brain. Because so far whatever you see through your brain is not the truth. What you see is just the outer side, say you can see the colors, you can see the different aesthetics of the colors you can see the quality of the thing. But you cannot say whether this carpet has been used by some saint. You cannot say whether this is made by a devil or a divine person. You cannot say that this gentleman is he a good person or he is an evil person. 
you cannot say if this deity has come out of the mother earth or not also you cannot say about any person who is your relation whether he is a good relation or a bad relation or what sort of a person he is whether he goes to wrong people or to the right people whether he has connections with the wrong side or with good side here good means divine so actually you do not know anything about divinity with your mind nothing nothing is impossible for you to judge a person about his divinity unless and until the kundalini reaches at least this part which is the limbic area you cannot make out whether a person is real or not whether a guru is real or not because divinity cannot be perceived through your brain unless and until the light of your spirit shines into it now the spirit is expressed in the heart is reflected in the heart the center of the spirit we can say is in the heart but actually the seat of spirit is above here and that is the spirit what we call of the god almighty who say who you call uh parvardigar you call him sada shiva or you can call him uh the rahim and you can call him by many names which are said about the lord who is god almighty niranjan they call it nirankar every sort of words we start with nir nihi now at every center in the body you receive a different type of joy every center has a different type of joy and there are names for every types of joy you receive at every center when the kundalini rises but when the kundalini comes into the sahasrara then the joy you receive is called as nirananda nirananda now ni means nothing else but ananda nirananda also surprising my name is nira also in my family i am called as nira and nira also means Mary, Maria, because it means marine. Nira is water. Nira means water in Sanskrit. It is called as nira anand in the brain. And this stage ultimately unfolds. First, what you know is the satya, is the truth. What is this? Another gentleman is suffering from that. you see on your fingers first you see your fingers with your attention you know what chakras what fingers are catching with your attention then with your brain you can depict what center it is catching because if you say this finger that doesn't mean it is vishuddhi chakra but your brain then says it is vishuddhi and that depicts it that this fellow is suffering from the troubles of the vishuddhi chakra but still it is rational because you see what finger it catches and then you say but when the satya khand or the sahasrara unfolds itself more you don't have to think about it you just say it. then there is no difference between your chitta and your satya the 
enlightened chitta and enlightened brain become one. There is no problem at all for such a person, there is no need to see on the fingers, no need to say anything on the fingers and then depict it through brain, which you have learnt in Sahaja Yoga, that if you find something wrong here it means agya. That's not necessary. You just say agya. And you just say it and it is there. Then it unfolds more. First it is integrated with, as I said, chitta. Then when it gets absolutely integrated with the Spirit, then whatever you say is the truth. You just say it, it is so. That is how this brain unfolds into three new dimensions. First, it depicts the truth through logical conclusions, because I have told you that if this finger is catching, then it is Vishuddhi. And then you ask the person, have you got a problem here? He says, yes. Then you believe in Me and then you believe that this is the Vishuddhi chakra which is showing is true. This is the logical conclusion. In a way that you have experimented, you are seeing are still doubting whether Mother says it's true or not, and then you are sure, yes, it is so, we have seen this is Vishuddhi Chakra. So the truth becomes logically acceptable to this brain, but still there is the brain working out on its close level. Then the second stage, as I told you, where you believe, you know for definite that this means Vishuddhi Chakra, no doubt. Nobody, then, then we start, then Vikalpa has started, when there's no doubt about me or Sahaja Yoga. But then the new unfolding starts within. For that one has to do meditation. In humility one has to do meditation. And then also for this new dimension where your chitta itself becomes merged into your brain or into the enlightened brain, for that one has to very honestly and humbly surrender to Sahaja Yoga. Now what do we do when we get our vibrations? We have different, different reactions. Some people do not even understand the value of vibration. Some people try to learn what it means and some people suddenly think, oh, now they are realized souls, they can go on giving realizations, this, that, they go on a right of an ego trip. When they go on a right of an ego trip, then they find that they have failed and they have to come back. From the very beginning they start. It's like the game of snake and ladder. So the reaction to vibration should be a very humble, receptive reaction. Now on the gross level, because as I told you that the brain is the one which holds the father. So if we commit any sins against the Father, then this unfoldment in the brain takes some time. So we start reading books and though people have told that first see the vibrations and then read the books, still we say, oh, what's wrong, we should read other books. You go down again. Snake and ladder, as I said, that is one of the snakes. 
we think that what is the need to do meditation, I have no time, I have this thing, that thing. You do not progress. The other point which is very gross, also there are some very gross people in Sahaja Yoga who enter it, doesn't matter. But first thing you must know, you have to be honest, very honest in Sahaja Yoga. The honesty is like I have seen people, if you have a dinner, say for a marriage party, they will just crawl into it without having any self-respect, without having any understanding as to who is going to pay for it, all this. They will bring all their family, come down and sit down. There are people who avoid paying money which should be paid for Sahaja Yoga, supposing they are eating food or they are traveling or they are coming from abroad, they have to pay money for their traveling, for their food. And sometimes, you know, I have to pay a lot of money. Doesn't matter, I don't mind. But it's not good for it. The main thing is not good for it. So how you behave towards Sahaja Yoga as far as money is concerned, is also very important, though it looks gross, but it can give a big trouble in the unfoldment because of the nabi catching. And as you know, if the nabi catches, it can spread up to the whole of void. And if the void is catching Ekadasha Rudra, which is placed here, the destructive forces built in. So before coming to Sahaja Yoga, it was all right, you were doing all kinds of things and you would have smoothly gone to hell without any difficulties. It is very easy to go to hell. You can take two running jumps and go to hell. The rest of it you should see. But going to hell is the easiest thing. For that you don't have to work hard or do anything about it. But when you are ascending, when you are rising, then it is little difficult. You have to be careful that you should not falter, you should not fall, and that you are ascending. So you have to be very alert about yourself that you are not falling into the same habits which you have. Some people are, have a habit of saving money at the cost of surgery. Some have a habit of making money at the cost of surgery. Some people have habit of not giving the due amount, and like that. It's, it's something, you know, of cheating. They all go out of Sahaja Yoga in no time. They may be looking like great leaders in the beginning, but they go out just like that. And many a time people tell me, Mother, why don't you keep a proper account and all that? But in Sahaja Yoga I am not supposed to keep any accounts or anything, because my accountants are Sahaja Yoga. If you try to play tricks with Sahaja Yoga, immediately you are pushed down in your awareness, in your Nabi Chakra. You are never helped. You may make a thousand rupees here, but you will make thousands of rupees by getting to trouble. You will have any kind of a problem that I cannot tell. And then you will say, How did I get this problem? So, Nabi Chakra, if you are not honest in your seeking, Honesty of seeking not only means I want to seek, it also means what is your behavior is towards yourself and towards others. You have to be honest to yourself that you sit down for meditation, try to improve your antar yoga, try to make your uh, thoughtless awareness, this feeling of thoughtlessness, wider and wider. Try to achieve that state where you really feel thoughtless. So the honesty lies as you rise higher and higher, deeper and deeper into your own being. First you depend on Me, that after all Mother is going to do everything. When I went to Mother, My sister was opened up. This thing happened, then this thing happened. But what about you doing something that helps you? open your sastrara. So opening of the sastrara is very important. 
Now surprisingly, it is so placed that Sahasrara has got the Brahmarandra at the level where there is, I mean at the point where there is the heart chakra. So we must know that Brahmarandra is directly connected to your heart. If it is not done from the heart, superficially done Sahaja Yoga, you cannot go very high. You have to put your full heart into it. That is the main thing. Like people, they come to Sahaja Yoga and they are murmuring behind, this could have been like that, that could have been like that, uh, all those things. All such people also are what Christ calls as murmuring souls. He said that, be careful about these murmurings. Those who go on murmuring behind and taking advantage uh, as if uh, they, they are trying to save others. All such people also can suffer a lot because they are doing a double game and such a double game is very dangerous when you enter into the kingdom of God. Any kingdom you are member of, any kingdom, if you are treacherous to that kingdom, you are punished. But in the God's kingdom, it's so blissful, absolutely blissful. Complete blessings are poured on, absolutely with everything, health, wealth, mental, emotional, all kinds of prosperity you can get in search of, no doubt. But when you are so much blessed, you are also forgiven and forgiven and forgiven and there is a long rope given to you to hang yourself, but you really hang fully. It's not half. So those people who think they can be dishonest with Sahaja Yoga, have to be very careful, please don't do it. If you don't like to be in Sahaja Yoga, you better go away. It's better from your point of view and from our point of view also. Because in case you are dishonest, you are trying to play tricks and games and you suffer and you look funny and strange, then people will say, what's wrong with Sahaja Yoga? So we will unnecessarily suffer. Because we cannot show you in the mirror that this man has been very, very uh, disloyal. We cannot show that. So it will bring a bad name to us, first of all. And secondly, you will be harmed by this kind of a thing. If you are harmed, then also we will have a bad name that how could it happen. But if you are honest about Sahaja Yoga and about your seeking, you don't know how much God looks after you. Anybody who tries to do any harm to you will be very badly harmed and removed from your path. God protects you out and out and He looks after you with complete attention and care. And He's so loving that description of His compassion cannot be given in words but can be only felt and understood. Now the problem is, people who are dishonest are because of their background sometimes, because of their education, because of their upbringing, or maybe because they are cowards. But there is also another thing that can make you dishonest, is your Purva Janmas, and that's how you take your birth and your kundali is made like that. But after Realization, those people who are of a great valor and great self, strength ascend so fast that all the problems of the stars, all the problems of your nakshatras and all that, constellations, everything disappears and you become a Sahaja Yogi, means a newly born absolutely a different personality. It has nothing to do from where you are. Like an egg be becoming a beautiful bird. 
so this kundalini when it arrives here the first hurdle the kundalini has to enter into the sastara is ekadasha rudra is here there are 11 rudra shaktis 11 destroying shaktis placed here five on this side five on the other side and one in the center these are obstruction within us built by two kinds of sins we come in if we bow our head to wrong type of gurus and submit ourselves to their vicious ways then we develop rudra rudra problems on the left hand side these five go out if you have i think is that the way now <laughs> is the if you have bow because i have never bowed to anybody wrong so i don't know what to say it is a mistake of stop there <laughs> if you bow to someone who is a wrong type of a person and who is anti god then the problem comes on this side of the thing on the right side if you have the sense that i can look after myself i am my own guru i uh, who can teach me i don't want to listen to anybody and i don't believe in god uh, who is god i just don't care for god all such feeling if you have then your right side doesn't catch but the left side catches because right side moves this side and the left side is so these ten things and one is virata vishnu because also in the stomach we have got ten guru sthanas and one that of vishnu so the seeking is also there as well as these ten gurus are there then you develop this ekadasha rupa when this thing is settled set in within you as i said one on this side one on that side so those people who are about to wrong type of people develop a temperament or a kind of a personality which is very vulnerable for incurable diseases like cancer and all that you may develop cancer or any such disease those who are bowed to wrong type of people now those who think i am better than anybody else I don't care for God. I don't want God. I have nothing to do. All such people develop the left side. Ekadasha and left side ekadasha is extremely dangerous too because such people develop the problems of the right side, heart attacks, physically. I'm and all of the problems of the right side so one of the greatest hurdles of kundalini entering into sastrara is this ekadasha rupa which comes from void and which covers the medha is the plate of the brain
and that is how it cannot enter into the limbic area. Even those who have been to wrong gurus, if they have reached right conclusion and surrender themselves to Sahaja Yoga, accepting their mistakes and saying that I am my own guru, they can be cured. And those who have been thinking that I am above all, I don't believe in God, who is God, I don't believe in any prophets or anything, anything against God or prophets is the same. And to God, personality, who talks like that, who develops the problems, gets all right if he humbles down himself and accepts Sahaja Yoga is the only way of, of entering into the super consciousness. I have seen people who have been tantrikas are being saved. I have seen people who have done all kinds of wrong things have been saved. Those people who were members of very funny, strange organizations have been saved. But uh, it is very difficult to convince anyone that whatever they are doing has been wrong and they should come to right path. So a star came to play its part for Pluto and this star is the one which has brought cancer disease because Pluto is the one that cures cancer or all such diseases which are incurable. So those people who just go headlong into wrong paths, suffer from funny type of heart troubles, palpitations, insomnia, vomitings, giddiness, all sorts of, uh, we can say, irrelevant talking. It is a very serious thing to go to a wrong guru and bow to him. Sahasrara becomes a close area for such a person. The persons who are against Sahaja Yoga have a very strong Sahasrara, like a nut in the sense that it's such a strong shell that you cannot just break it. It's a strong shell, like a thick nut. Even if you want to use a hammer, you cannot break it. Today the time has come that you have to recognize Sahaja You have to. You did not recognize any saints, any prophets, anyone, any incarnation. But today the condition is that you have to recognize. If you do not recognize it, your Sahasrara cannot be open because this is the time when the Sahasrara was open and you have to have your relax. So the very important thing that you have to recognize Sahaja Yoga. There are many people who say that, Mother, why to believe in Sahaja Yoga this way? We can just call you just Mother, you could be my Mother, see? All right, doesn't matter. But you can't get your Realization. And even if you get it, you cannot retain it. So you have to recognize, recognition is the only worship of Sahaja Recognition is the only worship when you want to know 
bought in search. All the other ganas, devtas, deities, shaktis are one in unison in search. And anyone who does not recognize Sahaja Yoga, they just are not bothered about you what sort of a person you are. For example, a man who worships Shiva, he comes to Me and I find his heart scratch. surprising. He says, Mother, I worship Shiva, how is it My heart is scratch? I said, You have to recognize Sahaja Yoga. Just ask Shiva. And when he asks the questions to Shiva, then only the vibrations start flowing. So, Sahasrara takes charge that it makes you recognize and also it convinces you to prove it. And by this proving, even if you are not recognizing, then you cannot get your realization. But those who recognize also recognize partly. They take liberties, they behave in a funny manner without understanding that who is this person who is here. I have seen many a times I am talking, people are just putting their hands up, Kundalini. They are just talking, chit-chatting. I am surprised because if you have recognized, then you should know whom you are facing. Because it's not for my good, I am not going to lose anything. But only you in your ascent have not recognized. That shows that you have not yet recognized. And the way some people try to monopolize me also is absolutely wrong. There is no need to monopolize me, nobody can monopolize. There are some people who say that Mother must have misunderstood. I never misunderstand, there's no question. Or some people try to tell me, do this, do that, that's also not necessary. Try to open yourself to this protocol, which is very important in Sahaja Yoga, which I have told for the first time today, that you must try to recognize in a full way. And if you do not recognize, I'm sorry, I can't give you the realization it will sustain. I'll, it will start, but it may not sustain. So this is the simplest way of achieving your higher things is by recognizing gradually and recognizing gradually. It is very difficult to tell anybody if something is wrong with that person. Impossible. After Sahaja Yoga, I can tell you this chakra is catching, that chakra is catching. But also because you know what does that chakra means, you can come back on me, no, no, mother, you see, it's not so, I'm not. That's not so. Why should I tell you you are catching? You have to cleanse yourself with full honesty. But first thing is to recognize with full humility and understanding. Once you have recognized, Gradually you will do everything that has to be done. You know what is to be done. Now the essence of Sahasrara is integration. In Sahasrara all the chakras are there, so all the deities get integrated and you can feel their integration. That means when you get your Kundalini in Sahasrara, your mental, emotional and your spiritual, everything being becomes one. Your physical being also merges into it. Then you have no problem as to, uh, yes, I love Mother, but uh, I'm sorry, uh, I have to steal this money. Yes, I know I recognize Mother, yes, I know she's great, but I can't help it, I have to tell her lies. 
or I have to do this wrong thing because after all uh, I can't help it. There is no compromise with Me. It has to be completely integrated. Your dharma should be corrected. You cannot do anything wrong and then say, I am a surgeon. You cannot. But for this the strength comes from within. Your spirit strengthens you. You must just put in your willpower that, yes, let my spirit act, and then you start acting according to the spirit. Once you start acting according to the spirit, you find you have no slavery of anything. You become samartha, means equal to your meaning. Samartha, also samartha means powerful personality. So you develop that powerful personality which has no temptations, which has no wrong ideas, which has no catches, no problems. But people who are sneaky, sly, try to try, uh, play some tricks, are really harming themselves, not Sahaja Yoga. Sahaja Yoga is going to be he has been and will be. It's going to be established. Even if there are ten people in the boat, God is not bothered. It's only my botheration as a mother. As a mother, I want many people to come up in the boat, but don't try to ch jump back by doing all dishonest things. So this is what it is simple that you are integrated by integration you get the power to do what you understand and you have power to feel happy with what you understand. So you come to a stage where you develop this Nirānanda, and this Nirānanda you develop when you are absolutely the Spirit. In Nirānanda state, there is no duality left, it's Advaita, it's one personality. That is, you are completely integrated and the joy is not any more dented, it's complete. It hasn't got a happiness and a sorrow aspect, but it's just joy. The joy is not that you laugh loud, Joy is not that uh, you, you, you're always smiling, no. It's the stillness, the quietude within yourself, the peace of your being, of your spirit, that asserts itself into vibrations. It, you feel that when you feel that peace, you feel like light of the sun, the whole race of that beauty spread. But first of all we are cowed down by our own personal, selfish, stupid ideas. Throw them out. We have them because we are insecure, because we have wrong ideas. Throw them out. Just stand alone, one with God, and you will find all these fears were useless, our cleansing is very important and that cleansing comes only when you really practice the cleansing as told in Sahaja The Sahasrara is the blessing of the heavens, I should say. It has worked out so well. It's very difficult to break the Sahasrara and when I really broke it, I didn't know that it would be that successful. First I thought it's st still premature because there are many Rakshasas still uh, on the s street selling their goods. And there are many fanatics who are calling themselves by the so-called religions they are following, not the real religion of the Atma, but gradually it has taken its now let this truth take its root within yourself through your sastra. 
And once this truth becomes absolutely the light that guides you, the light that nourishes you, the light that enlightens you and gives you a personality that has the light, then only you should know that your sastrara is completely enlightened by your Spirit. Your face should be such that people should know that there's a Personality who's standing before you who is light. This is how sastrara is to be looked after. For looking after sastrara is important that you should try to cover your head during winter time. It's better to cover your head during winter time so that there is no freezing in the brain, because brain is also made of meda, means fats, so it should not be frozen. Moreover, you should not take too much heat on your brain. To keep your brain all right, you should not sit in the sun all the time, as some of the Westerners do. Then your brain melts and you become a crazy person. Is a sign that a person is going out for madness. Is something which I have told many a times that don't take too much heat on your head. Even if you are sitting in the sun, keep your head covered. Covering of the head is very important. But the covering of the head should be done occasionally, not all the time, because if you just put a very heavy band around your head, then the circulation becomes poor and you may have trouble with bad circulation. So it is an occasional opening of the head to the sun, and to the moon occasional. Otherwise you will sit in the moon and land up in the lunatic asylum. Anything I tell you, you must know that in Sahaja Yoga we have not to go to anything ati. Even sitting in the water, some people will sit for three hours. I never said so. Only for ten minutes you have to sit, but with full heart. If I tell them anything, they'll go on doing it for four hours. There's no need. Do it for ten hours. Give your body different, different types of treatments. Not all the time the same thing. The body gets bored or gets absolutely uh, overburdened. Now if you tell somebody, this is your mantra, all right, it is to be used till you get rid of your chakras, finished. Now something, some screw is to be put here, all right. Now what you do, you put the screw till it fixes. You do not go on, even when it is fixed, are you going to screw it more and more? So that uh, the whole thing gets spoiled. It's better that you use wisdom. And for this wisdom we must know that it is Sri Ganesha or Jesus Christ who are placed on both the sides. Here is Maha Ganesha, here is Jesus Christ. Both of them help you to correct your vision, understanding and give you wisdom. So the wisdom lies not in sticking on to something. Sahaja Yogis are not stuck-up people. If they are stuck-up, they are not progressing. You are not to get stuck-up with ideas and stuck-up with things. You have to be all the time moving, and in movement it doesn't mean that you should fall from somewhere and people think, oh, we are earning such a lot because we are falling down. You have to ascend in you, not to fall. So when you are achieving something in Sahaja Yoga, first of all you should see your health should be all right. Your mind should be normal, you should be a normal person. If you are still barking at people, then know that there's something wrong with you. Or if you are still sulking and still tantrumish and if you are still uh, in a bad mood, then think you are not yet a surgeon. You can judge yourself. If you are free like a bird, 
then it's all right. But that doesn't mean on the road you start singing like a bird and jumping on a tree. You see, any analogy I give to a stupid man, he can behave in a very stupid way. But to a wise man, he discreetly uses it for a proper purpose. So one has to understand Sahaja Yoga is known by the discretion person has. Now what happens actually that you get stuck with one thing that is your Atma and the whole your being floats like a patanga does or uh, a kite that floats, goes all over the places, everything, but you are stuck to one thing, that is your spirit. And if you could really do it genuinely and honestly, not worry too much about your money and your family and other mundane things, just don't worry about it. You don't have to worry, just give it a month. If it doesn't work out, doesn't work out, finish it. What's that wrong? If it works out, well and good. Not that your desire is important, but thy will be done. First you say, thy will be done, then it is so surprising that your wills change, your desires change and whatever you say is done. But when this also comes up, people develop an ego. So be careful is all done by the Shakti and not by you, by your Atma and not by you. You have to be the Atma and once you become the Atma, you become into a karma where you don't know that you are doing it, just works out. You don't feel, you are not aware. I wish after all these lectures most of your chakras must have been hooked. But this is all my work. You have to also do some homework and you have to also work and see for yourself, be alert. Try to face yourself in the mirror and see for yourself how far honest you have become, how far clean have you become, how far friendly you are in collectivity, which is a very important point in Sahaja Yoga. If you are not collective, if you are funny, if you are strange, if you cannot communicate with others, then something wrong. And then you should face yourself as you are and try to correct it. Because you separate yourself from yourself, like I separate my sari from myself and try to clean it, in the same way. You separate yourself from yourself and try to clean it. This is the way Sahaja Yogis are going to ascend. When the Sahaja Yogis will ascend, the rest of the things also will ascend. Many Sahaja Yogis uh, of this kind will impress so many people that they will also ascend. So the whole thing can ascend very fast, but you people who are rising higher should try to rise higher and higher without being aware of it. That's very important. Those who are also, who think that others are higher than them, are also sadly mistaken because that's not so, it's the whole that's right. Nobody should feel that way inferior or in any way low or feel insulted that somebody thinks me low. Let somebody think what does it matter, Divine doesn't think so. So all these little, little things you should be careful about and otherwise it's very easy in this Krita Yuga achieve the ultimate goal of Atma Sakshatnara. I think today I have told you quite a lot about Sastrara, but if you have any problem about Sastrara, you may ask me now, but only about Sastrara and nothing else is better to ask me questions about Sastrara instead of all other things. <laughs> Thank you, thank you.